Okay, so if you're looking Ink. to sign to Mad Fatty, you also might get some G Force collabo clothing as well. Oh, nice. Mm, so let's <laughs> talk about that. Um, what G Star you mean? Uh, G Star. I put. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. You meant, I, but... I researched G Star, and then my dyslexic brain wrote down G Force, but G Star. So, yeah, I bad. do that all the time. Um, actually, well, the G Star stuff was like we're finished that, mm -hmm. but I am actually starting a new clothing line, which will just be me, like no collaborations. Okay. Um, um, I'm kind of just starting it now. So I have a name in mind, but I don't want to say it until we get like for sure. Mm. Um, but I'm going to start with probably some like smaller items first and some Halo products, which is like basically like really out of this world items. Mm -hmm. I want to do something like really weird with, with the line. So it's not really like merch. It's more like a, like just a straight fashion brand. So I, I'm going to be doing that because I've had a lot of people reach out to me and be like, I can't get those G-Star glasses anymore. Mm. But those were like, we had like Pharrell wearing them and like Red Hot Chili Peppers and Shaggy and stuff. So like once you get those guys wearing them, like they just sell out like in one second. Yeah. So we don't have any more of those. I have like three pairs, but I'll, gi I'll give it to Drake. I'll give one to Drake maybe. Yo, Drizzy, you know what I mean? You gotta, y'all you, gotta link yeah. up so that you can get those G Star glasses over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Drake, Drake is. You guys have never met. <laughs> no. I'm surprised. No. Wow. I know. Wow. I know. Well, maybe he'll be. Maybe he'll check this out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I'd, love to, I'd love to do some songs for Drake. I think. I think I could do something cool. Yeah. For sure. So. Yeah with everything going on and my last couple questions i have for you right mm -hmm. um actually let me go in one quick direction over here to the left not too far okay Just a little bit. um how is it as a woman in the public eye right because you know you, you you've been in a lot of different public scenes and you're you're i don't want to say i hate saying superstar or star right but you're you're famous right I mean, I don't know about that, but <laughs> you're let's say known. Is it more difficult? Yeah, by some people, yeah. How is it navigating relationships as a person who's known? Yeah, I mean, I I've dated a few. I am straight, first of all. Mm. Let's just say that because I don't know why. There's been like this thing, like people think I'm gay, which is fine. I don't really care, but right. I love women. Women are sexy. I can be attracted to women, but I am straight. So the guys that i've dated have mostly been kind of also like in the public eye mm -hmm. so i usually um i feel like until i'm like married or like pregnant or something that i kind of like to keep it quiet keep it private yeah. um it's not really my personality to like use somebody to be more popular mm -hmm. um and i feel like a lot of people do that like you know they will date somebody just to get to the next level which is fine but yeah. it's not my personality really i also don't like people talking shit so i have dated a couple djs um and a couple athletes mm -hmm. and it's really hard to have people not know about it for sure <laughs> it's like and it's just not that <laughs> it makes it like stressful yeah. especially if i like when i was djing pre-covid like play, traveling a lot mm -hmm. The amount of times you can actually see somebody is really difficult. Like it's just, you know, everybody's so busy. And um, I, I dated a hockey player for a bit, and he was kind of like, it was like I couldn't really see him during season, and then mm -hmm. off season he would just want to like party the whole time. And I'm like, I have to work still. So, like, <laughs> you know, I'm a DJ, but that doesn't mean I'm partying the whole time. Like yeah. I don't do drugs. I don't, you know, do that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, it's, I find some people want to date me because they think I'm like this crazy, like, you know, nightlife person and they the want to like, girl. let's go to Vegas and like, yeah. Mm. And I'm like the furthest from that. I'm like always on the computer, always working. Um, and any of these rappers that I work with know, like they know my personality. Right. They know that I'm not like that. I think uh, Dylan got me a little lit in the studio <laughs> <laughs> the other day. We were like, uh, we were, I don't know what we we're drinking. I think it was Henny or something, but yeah. I was like, man, I can't focus anymore. Like. <laughs> So what, but you don't, aside you don't, from don't smoke weed or don't you know you don't partake in chemis or anything like that. I, I I smoke a little bit. 
Um, but it makes me a little tired and I don't know, I get stuffy and that kind of thing. Mm. I like the smell of it and I like it, but it's not something I'm doing all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I like, my thing is red wine. So uh. if I want to relax or sometimes when I'm working or painting, I just like pour some, like a nice Beaujolais. Yeah. Get down with it. Has any, yeah. like in a relationship, has anybody ever tried to come to your workplace while you're working and just try to hang out while you're DJing and just mess up your flow? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had, I've definitely had some guys that I'm dating come to my shows and just get totally like belligerent. And I'm like, oh man, now I have to take care of you and my job. Like, it's, Crazy. yeah, because <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I have definitely gotten really drunk DJing, mostly in the early days, mm -hmm. like when I first started, because you're kind of caught up in it. Yeah. But if, if you're touring and you're flying every day, like you really can't like, I'm like 115 pounds. Like if I drink that much, I'm going to be on the floor. Yeah. So I, Tiesto actually got me really drunk one night and I missed my next show. I missed my flight. And I was just like, I couldn't get out of bed till like 9 PM the next day. And that was horrible. So <laughs> I want to hear about this, the, 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 um, the, the X incident going into the yeah. club and okay. getting smashed what oh, happened getting into it now Let me, what happened um, in that incident? actually the the one thing i was thinking about was there's this guy that i was dating and I, this sounds really bad but i i was i stopped dating him and i was dating this other guy and i they had become friends mm. but i don't think they knew that the situation so they came in together in the DJ booth, but like, I think the newer one was kind of oblivious that I had dated the other one. Mm -hmm. yet. I, maybe they know now, but um, they were just really drunk. And I was like, Oh my God, I hope no like information gets out here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, mostly I think when guys have dated get drunk, they get really um, insecure. Mm -hmm. So I think like they, they think I'm like checking out a dude or like, I don't know, there's some guy in the backstage or whatever. Yeah. Or they think I'm like with another DJ or something. Like I have a show with Calvin Harris or something and they're like insecure about it. Crazy. I had one I had one that actually that his ex was like flirting with Calvin Harris or something like that. And then um he was like, I hate that guy, like you shouldn't hang out with him and that kind of thing. Mm. Just like, so nothing relax. crazy like no bottles flying no, no crazy incidents like that because like the edm world can get people can get oh. fucked up in that world like not kind of yeah. like hella fucked up i mean i think most people in edm they're, they're on like mdma or something like at the festivals so they're more like zoned out but mm. i've have seen some stuff get aggressive with like mosh pits and stuff yeah um that has happened but I, I haven't had like an ex in that situation i've i've been djing places where there's been like bottle fights and stuff mm -hmm. Um, that I had to like run or like hide behind the booth because people were like throwing like magnums and stuff. Yeah. Um, that was in Toronto actually, but um, <laughs> Toronto. I haven't had an ex like really go crazy, no. Well, even with that, like, what's the most craziest incident that you've been DJing? Like, you're you're, you're DJing at the club and you're like, oh my god, like this is happening in front of you right now. Um, <laughs> well, it's not, it's not violent, but um. One time I was DJing in Vegas and there was a couple having sex like on the dance floor, Whoa. like fully. And <laughs> I think I was DJing with these guys, Ryan and Sunnery, um, like pretty big EDM DJs. Mm -hmm. Actually, Sunnery's with uh, Doubts and the Victoria's Secret model. It's uh, her, her husband. Okay. So I don't know if you've heard of them, but um, we were doing a show in Vegas and we were like, um, and I think... I even tweeted later, like to the couple that was like having sex, like I want your kid to be named <laughs> after me. <laughs> That's crazy. That was pretty shocking. I actually DJed a weird sex party once as well, back in the day. It. Um, somebody told me that it was like a swingers thing, and then it was in a club though, and I got there, and it was like they were paying me a lot, so I just shut my eyes and was like, whatever, <laughs> do your thing. <laughs> but. There's weird stuff happening in the corners and stuff. They weren't like right in the DJ booth or anything. So it was like an actual venue. It wasn't like a house or something like that. But yeah. that was really strange. About how many people? 
I think there's probably like 150, maybe. Okay. Not all together at once, but like <laughs> different <laughs> groups of people like around yeah. the, house, the the place. Yeah. That that was weird. Um, I mean, I I've had I've seen stages collapse and stuff as well. Um, oh. At Digital Dreams in Toronto, there was an insane storm one day, and the whole um, lighting thing was kind of like flying like this and mm-hmm. almost coming down so we had to like hide out of the way from that that was pretty scary some right. storms are scary being outdoor djing there wow, wow. happened a few times yeah a lot of electrical gear you don't want to be near right <laughs> yeah you start seeing like wires popping out and all of a sudden you're like oh shit, yeah am i gonna survive yeah. up here no. so like in in closing like we're in this time right now we're living in a pandemic right and your occupation, as far as like, you know, the, the DJing part of it, at, at least, you know, it, it entails you being in front of crowds. So how is that going to work right now with you? Are, are you? Well, I mean, it sounds like there's not going to be a lot of shows happening for at least another year or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like really um, to the same level. Um, I mean, in Europe, it looks like it's getting a bit better. Canada, it's getting a bit better. Right. But. I think it's important right now because not only that, but also like climate change and stuff. Like I I think there's a lot of crazy stuff happening now Mm -hmm. and so much violence and, you know, even the gun situation in Toronto is getting worse. Yes. It just seems like things are a little crazy right now. So it's definitely um, something that like worries me. Um, And that's why I kind of focus mostly on um, production right now Mm -hmm. and music production because you know, if you're doing a lot of top line writing and music writing, you can, especially if you're working for a bigger artist, you can kind of make a living that way or by right. doing remixes and stuff. Um, but yeah, right now it's harder because nobody wants to pay for anything right now. Mm. So you get like, you know, it's everyone's being a little frugal because everyone's a little scared. Yeah. Um, I started this clothing line, so hopefully that'll be like another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just, I've always been somebody to kind of like, hustle around just do you know a bunch of things and see what happens yeah, yeah um yeah. i'm also doing some stuff with some films um i'm a, a music advisor i guess you call it for this horror movie that's coming out soon okay um so basically i part own the movie so we're like looking to sell it to like a, a movie festival which is mm. also a problem because there's no festivals going on so it's all digital but yeah. Things like that, like maybe can, can we get writing. a name for that for that movie or are we um, it's to? called Dream Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. Yeah, I think you you it's fine if you know that now because they were posting it earlier. But okay. so I produced a couple of songs like for the movie and that kind of thing. So just I mean, if you know how to produce, then you can kind of there's a lot of things that you can make money with by doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, people are always gonna need music. So it's never going to go away. So I kind of just thinking of new ways. But that is definitely something I'm thinking about, like how because doing these live DJ sets and stuff, you know, like it's not really the same as (laughs) as being there live. So if you have any any ideas, then let me know. (laughs) They call me Ricky Dread, a.k.a. Full of Ideas. You know what I mean? So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There well, you I, go. Or I called myself that now, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, that sounds like a weird name. But <laughs> I said it publicly, so it, it is what it is now. If it's on the internet, then it must be true. That's, that's my Yeah, model. exactly. Right? That's the way it is today anyways. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, Eva, I really, really appreciate this. Like, I feel like we got a lot of information. Um, yeah. Through my research, when I was looking through the different, like, video interviews that I can find besides articles, I mm-hmm. felt like they were really good content pieces, but I, they were short. Yeah. Right? That's EDM world, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like as you progress in the game and for, for all the stuff that you've already done, there mm-hmm. needs to be something like this where people can catch the full history. And I feel that this is what we got today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for having me, too, because I've, I've sometimes I feel like, you know, since I've always said, like, you know, I don't pay attention to genres too much. But the fact is, there's definitely groups, there's like blogs and there's 
you know, YouTube accounts and there's stuff of people like, you know, each other in different genres. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I've always felt like, you know, I have to choose one or the other, but I, I'm happy that you are open to like talking to me too, like not coming from just a hip hop background and, and kind of like somebody who's, you know, has a different background. Well, I, I've been around the scene. I've been around like the house music scene for a long time, maybe a little bit further back, like late '90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to be in the comfort zone on Sundays and yeah. all these different oh, nice. places. Cool. So, I I'd be knowing about some house music. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. nice. <laughs> and I can go to a, a to a jam where like they play like zero hip hop and still enjoy the whole night. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I I've I, actually sorry. No, go go. I, I found that a lot that I think the people that are fans of hip hop also like other kinds of music, like real EDM heads. A lot of times they don't go outside of that. Yeah. But um, I, I mean, I've been playing hip hop in my EDM sets. I've been playing like all kinds of music in mm-hmm. my EDM sets. So um, I'm trying to bridge the worlds together because I think it's not that different, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely digging the music, the new stuff that you've dropped. You know what I mean? Um, I like that song bop the the bars are crazy on it and you're as soon as that beat comes in I'm like whoa so (laughs) yeah I'm gonna do a few a few more like really hard things like that I like that kind of stuff too so yeah Yeah. and and even with that like last couple things like who who is doing the direction for the videos is that your ideas for the videos or are you getting with directors to come with that yeah I mean I've always been really involved in my videos um the the last two for bop and um splash god Mm -hmm. that i mean they were definitely my idea i was like kind of getting everybody together um i have a really great editor allison shout out out, um yeah (laughs) um so yeah i just i wanted to just do a quarantine style like just film yourselves like more content just get it out there Mm um i i have these such crazy ideas and i wish i had crazy budgets because um you know it, i think it'll keep building i just i have i'm like my brain keeps going like when i think of ideas and sometimes there's things i want to do but like i can't because it's too crazy yeah. but um yeah i think i i've been directing i directed the y club video as well the one that i wrote with him Dope. um and i'm not in that i just put it together yeah I'm like a visual person too. So like when I make a song, I'm also thinking about the visual aspects. Mm-hmm. It's, it goes together to me. So yeah, yeah. yeah I like yeah. working with people that, that are like that too. Somebody like Dylan is also very visual. Um, and it's fun. Like it's another way to be creative. Yeah. Dope. 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 Yeah. Well, give the people your social medias, let the people know where they can find you, whether it's music wise or like any of the social media platforms. Well, everything is at Eva Shaw, except for my YouTube. That's at um, Eva Shaw Official, Mm -hmm. I believe. I'm like, wait, what is it? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So at Eva Shaw, everything, um, everything's connected. So my SoundCloud, um, Instagram, everything like that. And of course, Spotify, Eva Shaw, I'm on there. Um, Some things you might not know about that I've written or, or produced that my name's not on, but that you'll find somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Do Do your your Googles. You know what I mean? Um, Do your Googles, Googles, kids. Like, <laughs> yeah. when you get on YouTube or any of those platforms, just look for that little Avi that has the little, the, the white background with the red mask over the face. So it's like a cartoon. Oh, picture. yeah. My, my little logo there. Yeah, I'm drowning yeah. in the water or oh, blood or whatever it is. I don't know what that is. I I'm thought like, that was a red mask. No, I'm drowning. But it could be a mask, yeah. No, I got to look at it a little bit closer. But that's a sick concept. I have like a bun on my head, yeah. And I'm yeah, like yeah, drowning. Yeah. It looks like a, <laughs> like a Japanese style type of picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. 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 So once again, thank you for doing this with us today. Thanks for having me. You know what I mean? So another six views. Um, I want to apologize to my people out there who ha- I haven't done one of these in a long time. You know what I mean? I want to thank Eva Shaw for doing this with me. Once again, look out for her music. Look out for her on production of a lot of dope hip hop coming forward. And then look out for all her stuff from before. Make sure to subscribe to our page as usual. Smash that like button, all that YouTuber stuff. You know what I mean? And um, (laughs) yeah, yeah, man, we out. Thank you. Nice to meet you.